Hi, fellow travelers. This week, uh, you have been busy looking at uh, your mind and how busy that mind is every day, every moment of the day, and how it controls every action you take. That was the third dimension versus the fourth dimension. And we've been talking about the third versus the fourth. And in the third, we live in a world of opposites. We live in a world of I, me, what's in it for me, uh, all the eyes and egoic tendencies one has. That's where we live. Hopefully you've got tired of listening to yourself this week. I can remember how tired I was of listening to myself and how boring I was. So I was introducing you to that part of yourself that is uh, constantly chitter-chattering and never really takes you very far anywhere because as you are looking at yourself, you're either looking at yourself in one state of the opposites or the next. One state or the next. You're happy, you're looking forward to something, it's happened, it wasn't what you expected, and the disappointment, the resistance, the revenge comes forth. All those things are in the head. It's all in the head. You live from the mental state of beingness. You live here. This is your beingness. And when you came into body, you came in, as I've mentioned, with a life plan. And that life plan has set you up to learn certain things and to support new abilities, new intelligence, new possibilities for you. But we get stuck in this maze. And I think the opposites are a maze. So this week we're going to look at the opposites in our life. We are going to be thinking about the opposites and seeing how the opposites affect us all day long. Because you're never going to want out of the opposites until you really look at how they uh, dominate your existence. So I want you to be thinking about the opposites and thinking about how they dominate your consciousness all the time. Because the third dimension is ruled by the opposites. The opposites experience. And God created it so that we would experience love and be able to experience the opposite of love, which is anger or hate or revenge or all the things that one experiences. Why did this creation create like this? Because God wanted to give us the experience of learning and balancing our soul in whatever way it needs to balance it with the experiences our soul choose to have. Because we have free will. We were given that free will from the very beginning of time as we evolved through all the different stages of our beingness. We were given free will. So in that free will, we experienced love, and we also experiencing not love. So we had both of the opposite experiences to teach us. We look at life and we see this, these people that have lots of money and you think, well, why did God bless them with all this money or this bad health or this child dying at five years old? What is all this about? One of the things that I questioned so many times was at the beginning of when I had a child that was retarded. I, why God? Why did I have this child? What, why was that important for me to have this child? And it was to teach you love. Well, of course I love this child. What do you mean, teach me love? 
You'll find out, Jane. You'll find out what real love is. What is real love? That was a question that I had in the opposites. What is love? Because I can love something and hate that same thing that I loved five hours later or two months later. What is this thing called love? What is this opposite? I'm in this opposite of love. Love is love. But what is love? Is it control? Is wanting something from somebody else that they never can give us anyway? Love was the big question in my mind. I needed to understand what true love was. That is in the opposites. And as I was investigating what love is, I started to learn that as much as I love something, and it didn't come up to my expectations, I didn't like it very well. Now how does love go from one extreme to the other? From loving something and not loving something? That baffled me. That was in the opposites. That baffled me. And I, I said, please help me, out-of-body teacher, to understand about love. Because I didn't understand. I began to see that some of my love was all directed at making you want to love me. And yet, if you love me, then what did I have to do to keep your love? You see? Love has many, many dimensions on it. Many, many different hues of light on it, so to speak. But love lives in the opposites. How do I get out of my idea of what love is so I surrendered it to my out-of-body teacher, to God, the infinite intelligence of this universe. Teach me about love. I sure don't understand it. Because even with my children, there were moments I adored them and then other moments I, oh my God, they are making me so angry. Back and forth. Even a job that I dearly wanted so badly and got. Three or four months later, it was like, why did I take this job? You see, because it was in the opposites. I was there to learn something in that job. I was lear there to learn something with that child. I was there to learn and to grow and to move out of the limited self that I was. Because, you see, as a soul in evolution, you always come down in a limited state of beingness. Limited. You're limited to this parenthesis. And you don't remember that you're unlimited. And I remember when they used to say, you are unlimited. And it's just like, I sure don't feel unlimited. Help me to understand what unlimited is. Well, in the third dimension, you're never going to feel unlimited. You have to stand up beyond. Here's the parentheses. And when you stand up beyond and you can look down into what your actions are and become the great observer of self, which we've been working on for the last few weeks, we, be, we are able to understand, we are understanding what's going on in our life from a higher point of view. Because you're so encapsulated in this third dimension. So we've been asking to move out of the third dimension into the fourth dimension where there's clarity. Clarity about what's happening here. Oh, how wonderful not to have to worry about that. Not have to think about that. To have the clarity of beingness. 
But in order to let go of something, we have to be able to see how it's suffocating us. Because if we don't see how it's suffocating us, we aren't going to move out of it. How important it is to understand that there's love here. There's love here, but it's not possessive love. It's a higher love. And I realized my love was possessive. I realized that my limited self could only love in a certain way, and I wanted to love in a new way. So your work this week is to observe. Observe your thoughts all day long, not just when you're meditating. That was last week. This week is observe your thoughts all day long and see how you reinvent yourself moment by moment in your head. You have to get out of your head to go into the greater understanding of who you are. You have to get out of your head to understand real love. You have to get out of your head to move out of this world of opposites. You have to move out of that limited part of yourself that is dominating your life. Dominating it. It thinks it owns it. It's limited. It's a parenthesis that's limited. Move out of that. Move out of that. I empower you to move out of that limited part of yourself that believes in this illusion. This is an illusion. This is an illusion that has to be broken. And the only way you can break it is you have to break it yourself with the help of your out-of-body teacher. You have to break it. And when we live in our mind, and it's telling us all these lies about ourself, and we believe them, then we are putting ourselves in this little parentheses. We are opening the door. We are opening this door. We want to learn about what real love is. We want to learn what we need to let go of. So this week, we are going to focus on what's happening all week long in our head as we go to the grocery store, as we go to our jobs, as we're with our children. What's going on in our head? What is happening? What is happening? So if you'll join with me just for a, a few moments, close your eyes and just be with me. Oh, as we open ourselves, give us new eyes to see and new ears to hear so that we are aware of all the things that's going on in our head again this week. Not only when we're meditating, but when we're living out our day. Help us. Help us, help us. And thank you for helping us. Thank you for opening that door to a higher consciousness. Thank you for not letting us be stuck in this small illusion of parentheses that we're in right now. There's something bigger, there's something greater for us to discover. And we want to discover it. We are empowered to discover it this week. We are empowered to have many revelations about ourselves in this parenthesis. We are empowered to control our mind.
Amen. And thank you for being a part of this journey with me. I will see you next week, and we will move forward. Have fun looking at that little mind that goes round and round. <laughs> Bye-bye for now.